Uh, well, Jean-Marc, please uh, welcome to, to our TV show dedicated exclusively to student sports. Uh, this is the first time for us th to have someone from from abroad in our show. So, um, no, it's not. We were on Belgrade Sports Tournament. I don't know if you heard about it or any other tournaments from Serbia. Uh, which one? Because I hear, I hear about a lot of tournaments like best and <laughs> Euroja idea or something like that. But yeah. we was there for the best tournaments uh, free, I think, in 2000. Or something like that. So yes, I hear about some. Yeah, you know, from Oh, perhaps, perhaps we we met. Uh, perhaps I met your team then, because we also were on best tournament uh, last three years. So perhaps we had a chance to meet. Uh, uh, maybe because I, I know I remember that I have some interview with uh, some yeah. radio or some yeah. journalist. So I yeah. don't know exactly where is it. Maybe it's you or your company. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, please tell me tell me something about uh, student basketball in France. We all uh, people know about INSEP, about the Institute of Sports, but how's yes. uh, how's the how the student sport in France is organized? How many universities there are? The quality of the sports or whatever you. Uh, so I say hello for you and all your friends for the show. Uh, it's, it's, we, I'm very really happy to be there and with you on the phone and can talk about our competition here in France. And it's also a good chance for us and for French people to know about your country and about the, the, your the mind in your country. Mm -hmm. So if I can, what can I say about our competitions? Here in France, it's... Um, we have uh, 75 university and maybe 10 or 15 schools also. So our competition is very, very, very hard because we have, they, they mix everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we have only two different, uh, two different level. We have swaps level is only a pleasure and um, basketball game or every sports games just mm -hmm. for pleasure. And we have uh, stops including uh, swaps and incepts, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so um, start competition is very hard, it's, it's, but it's, it's a mix of many competition, many level. You can find professional players, and because the, the idea is to make sports and study in the same time. Yeah. And uh, tell me, do you have any privileges because you are playing for your university, or or professors don't look? Yes, yes, we have a lot of privileges. You know that a lot of uh, European, uh, what do say, French records in like in uh, what can I say, in Olympic games or uh, European championship. Mm -hmm. Many of them come from university. Uh, uh, sports, yeah, University League. Games. Can you yeah, do you yeah, know yeah. some of them? Do you uh, Teddy Arena, Teddy Arena, uh, I don't know Tony Parker. Uh -huh. uh, I can give you many, many in every uh, tombo for uh, jump. Yeah. We have in many, I can say many sports, many kind of sports, natation, uh, long manado. They all, all of them come from university uh, contest, you know. Great. So you have all of many of them, lot of them, yes. So you, the university sport is in France a great opportunity for professional, for amateur players to play along with future professionals and to keep themselves in sport, to keep training and and doing their best. Yes, 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 and we, we travel a lot, a lot because we every year uh, the best, the best university or the best player for uh, all of the university uh, opportunity to travel over all, all the world in Europe, the championships in uh, uh, universities mm -hmm. and in European games. So they came. I want to say uh, trainer, national trainer come to take pupils players when the university yeah. uh, contest. So. Uh, I will ask you only one question and it yes. uh, and it's uh, you were in Belgrade so you played against teams from from Serbia 
How can you? Yes. How's your opinion about the quality of Serbian basketball players and Serbian teams? I can say that you have high level, high level, when you have good players. I all. Let's guess. I can say that you have a lot of good players, mm -hmm. and they are, when we play against them, they are lot. They, they have a lot of motivation, and they they, they are very. That's a good fighter on the on the ground. So we we, all, we always like to play against Serbian people and Serbian players. They are good. They have good shooting. They have good move. They have a lot of knowledge in basketball. Mm -hmm. And I can say that they are, we, we, you are good. Yeah. You know that I hear about your your players many years ago with uh, Stefan Stojakovic. Mm -hmm. I I saw them playing in the NBA and I saw your. Pre the Serbian people playing in NBA and Euroleague, so mm -hmm. I, I will play pre-European championship with uh, my national team in 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 university contest, mm -hmm. and we always like to play against you. Yeah, great. <laughs> I, I read a few interviews and I read that the Detroit Pistons were really close, close to your hometown. So you wish. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Detroit Pistons played at one time uh, five kilometers from my house mm -hmm. in downtown Detroit. So I used to watch the Detroit Pistons uh, as a kid in the 60s and 70s, 1960s and 70s. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they've always been like either them or. Or the Lakers were my two favorite NBA teams. Even now? Yeah, I mean, I still, I'm still a big Pistons fan, and I was always a Lakers fan since a young boy. Yeah, uh, I would like to, I would like to have uh, two or three segments of our conversation. Uh, first is regarding your college career. Uh, I found out that you played a great game between uh, Indiana and Michigan State, uh, and that you had some wonderful teammates and wonderful nickname in, in college basketball and the second of all what is most interesting because our website is dedicated to college sports in Serbia and on the Balkans and we are interested in uh, that social social part of college sport how important oh. college sport is in the uh, United States and in Canada it's really okay. important because we're trying to, to, to make uh, to make comparison why student sport in Europe will never be as much important as it, it, as it is in, in the States. So okay. that's something that, that uh, we, would like to, we would like to resolve and we would like to talk about. So I would, I would firstly uh, like to ask you, you are the golden arm of Canada, yeah? <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that's my nickname for sure. Yeah, it, uh, tell me. Uh, what what were your starts in the basketball? Your high school, high school career, and afterwards college career for all of those who don't uh, possess Google. My, my, yeah, my high school stats were uh, my high school team won the city our city championship uh, three years while I was on the team, and we also won the provincial championship mm -hmm. uh, for two years. Uh, and then uh, I averaged approximately, I'm going to give you 13, 30 points per game in high school and, and probably 12 or 13 rebounds. Uh, I was more, more uh, a center or a forward in high school. Uh -huh. But when I went to university, they, they, they switched me over to a guard. Yeah. So uh, my, my college career, I, I, I played and started at Michigan State for three years. Uh, becoming the co-captain my senior year and uh, eventually being drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks of the NBA. Uh, I, I didn't, I was more of an all round player in college. I, I think I averaged maybe eight, seven or eight points per game, uh, three, I think four assists. Yeah. Uh, but the college game has changed dramatically since I played, of course. Uh, we didn't have a shot clock. We never had a three point line. Uh, so, so I, I, I guess, uh, over the course of my life, I've watched college basketball and pro basketball change a lot. Yeah. And, uh, you were the first Canadian player who played NCAA championship and also the first one who won the title in the NCAA championship. Yes. Uh, someone told me 
that I was the first Canadian to, I almost played that entire game in 1979 against Indiana State. I played almost all 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, a sports writer had told me then that I was the first Canadian to start in an NCAA championship game and basically played the entire game because a number of our, our other players got in foul trouble. But yeah, that's another fact as well. Yeah. And uh, when how I how I uh, got your name in, in in my computer is when I watched the game between Michigan State and Indiana State, and I I heard the name Mike Berkovich and also Don Berkovich, and uh, the description of the game was that it was the highest rated game ever televised, uh, the college basketball game ever televised. So that's perhaps the the best game ever between two college teams uh yeah most people remember that game uh it was uh, obviously uh magic johnson against larry bird but still to this day it's the highest rated ncaa basketball game that was ever on the networks mm -hmm. uh, i think for a number of reasons but uh i was fortunate to again play the entire game uh and start obviously but uh yeah, it brings back a lot of great memories when I watch the tournament every year. Yeah, and uh, your teammate was Irvin Johnson, lately lately known as Magic Johnson, and uh, if he's remembered well in the in the record books, and, uh, and also uh, Mr. Kelser. Yeah, he also played in the ABA afterwards. So how was it? Uh, the quality of the basketball, the quality of the players you played played along with. How would you describe it? How would you rate it? Uh, for that period of time. You also afterwards played some professional basketball. So how's the quality of college basketball comparing to the professional basketball in that time? At that time? Well, I think, Nanad, uh, to be honest, I think college basketball, the players, the biggest, the biggest change in college basketball was the three-point line and the shot clock. Mm -hmm. uh, when I played, they did not have a shot clock. And most players in, or, or people that enrolled in university would stay the entire four years. Yeah. Very few players would leave after a year or two, which was the hardship rule. So Magic left after his sophomore season, and that was the season we won the championship. I would say without exception and hesitation, I feel that the, the teams and the players were much more well-rounded 20 to 25 years ago. I don't think the rule changes have helped the game. And I think the rule of allowing players to leave after a year or two has hurt the college game. And I think there's a lot more parity in college basketball. Uh, as you mentioned, I played with Magic Johnson, who played 12 years in the NBA and won five world championships. Greg Kelser was a first round draft pick, played five years in the NBA. Another player on our team was Jay Vincent, Mm -hmm. uh, he had come off the bench that year, but he ended up uh, playing 12 years in the NBA as well. Uh, Larry Bird, arguably one of the greatest forwards of all time, maybe. Uh, I think the college game has changed a lot, and it's due to the fact of those three elements. Players being able to leave early, which yeah. never happened back in that time. Uh, the shot clock and the three-point line have dramatically changed the way the game is played which means the quality of player that's being produced by the college game is much different than it was 30 yeah. years ago. Well, uh, I read a, read a lot about one and done, that uh, phenomenon that players uh, enroll in college and let leave after the first year. So in your, in your case, you had, didn't have any, any respectable uh, MBA career, unfortunately. Uh, how that uh, college degree helped you afterwards? Did it help you to, uh, I, I would say, easy the, to ease the pressure that you were not, were not in the NBA or were not in the European uh, basketball? That, that's a very excellent question. Uh, I think without exception, uh, I met a lot of wonderful uh, classmates, students, uh, faculty. We have, a, we have a great alumni association of former graduates that are successful business people. I think what Michigan State allowed me to do 
was, was meet a lot of people that were instrumental in my development as a person uh -huh. uh, from, from like a, at a very young age. Uh -huh. So uh, after playing and in, in, uh, being drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks, I coached one year at Michigan State. Uh, and I, I knew, uh, even though I loved basketball, I didn't feel that coaching was my calling. So I was fortunate enough to be hired by a Michigan State graduate uh, for my first job. And that relationship uh, really solidified uh, my foundation uh, as a person. Uh, you know, he spent a lot of time with me, along with a lot of other great people I met uh, through the basketball program. So. I think it's just not basketball. It's Michigan State University had 40,000 students when I enrolled there, and they had a very large alumni association all across the United States, and they kept in contact with former players and so on. So it was a great networking tool for me and a real valuable asset for me. And also NCAA is the, I, I would say that it is equally or not, or even more popular in America and in the United States at NBA and professional basketball and the quality of NCAA is uh, argue, is not, not uh, is not the argument that it's less quality it's than NBA uh, what is the what is that thing that makes NCAA basketball more popular than professional sports I saw uh, the f yeah again another great question by you uh, <laughs> If you were sitting here in our city or in, in America and Canada, there is this desire for March Madness. Everyone in their workplace picks the brackets. Uh, they want to determine who's going to win. Uh, I think a lot of it is due to the fact that a lot of these schools have large graduates and big alumni associations. Uh -huh. Everyone remembers how it was when you went to university. Everyone yeah. remembers going to watch the uh, their team. So now that you're out there working and you're in your later 20s and 30s and 40s, it's a great way for you to root for the team that you did 20 years ago. Yeah. And I, and I think this madness or this hysteria that we see on college basketball are two or three reasons. One, one other reason is they're not professionals. They're doing it for the love of the game. And you see these young, young players, 19, 20, 21, trying to win a championship. Their emotions, uh, they're, they're, not, they're not adults yet, they're still kids. And I think the viewing audience really relates to that. Yeah. Uh, the, the pro game, I think, has really suffered the last 10 years because of, obviously, how the league is developed. I look at it as entertainment. I don't look at it as basketball. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think college basketball is so unpredictable that any team can beat any other team at any point. Yeah. So you could have a number one seed getting beat by a, a 10, a 12. You, you know, you've seen it year over year over year. You can never predict the champion. So I think people gravitate to that because of the youth, the inexperience of college players. It's not predictable. Uh, in, in March, spring is coming, and everyone recalls uh, as a student or an undergraduate in university going to watch their team play, so it kind of revives memories when they were kids. Yeah, it is a great way to revive your youth and the uh, best years of your life, uh, perhaps. Uh, well, you know, you know, Nena, you got to laugh. Like, during the next week or two, uh, if Michigan State would have made it to the Final Four, I would have got 100 or 200 phone calls from classmates and students and former coaches. So everyone really follows the game, and whether they're Facebooking me or Twittering me or doing something, uh, it, it's a great tool to rekindle all of these friendships and, and, and people you've met over the last 30 years. Yeah, we are trying, we are trying to make that impact in the uh, university sports in Serbia because here university sport is uh, something that is uh, not even not even recognized by the colleges and university uh, it's done the players are playing on their own uh, will on their or 
they're making their own time to to train and to play basketball. So it's really different, yeah. and it's hard to imagine how the friends the frenzy in the United States. Uh, and please tell me uh, now, Michigan State, are you cheering for Michigan State? To, are they still still playing in the March Madness, or I am not no, following this year? It was one of the biggest upsets mm-hmm. in uh, NCAA history. Mm-hmm. They got beat by a, they were a number two seed and got beat by like a, a, a 12 seed. So it was a large, it was a big upset in the first round. So they got eliminated and everyone here was disappointed and everyone had them going to the final four. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I still follow Michigan state basketball. I go to games every year. Uh, I'm part of the alumni group. I know the head coach. Uh, and I noticed I visited you know, Trebinia in October. I was in Trebinia in October, yeah. and they showed me the high school, and they showed me where uh, uh, Dan Bogiroda played, and I asked, well, is there a university here? Where is the next university? Is there a, a college here? And, and my cousins really didn't, they yeah. told me, no, the next closest one is, what, Sarajevo? They yes. said, uh, I mean, I'm interested, you know, in, in our in our culture, on up where we're at, the, the NCAA is really where all of the pro players gain their experience to play in the NBA. Yeah. I think in Europe, you have club teams, don't you? Yes. And uh, they take these these uh, kids as when they're 13, 14, and 15, where, where we're at, uh, high schools develop you, and then you go on to college or university uh, to play basketball. I think it's two different systems, right? Yes. So... I, I, I think most people don't realize uh, in Europe how how much how great it is to go to a big university to have an alumni association to meet friends and classmates. You're gonna you're gonna have those people in your life for the rest of your life. They become good friends. Yeah. So that's the great part. It's just not the basketball side of it. It's the social aspect. Uh, meeting people, creating relationships, those types of things. Yeah, and also if you don't manage to have a good basketball career or you have an injury problem, uh, you have something in your hands despite your basketball, your sports knowledge, despite your athleticism. So that's another great uh, asset you have when you're playing for college basketball, isn't it? Yeah. I think without question, if you got recruited by a good school like the University of Michigan or Michigan State University or a lot of Division I good academic schools, it's very expensive to go to university here. Where we're at to go to university could be twenty-five or $30,000 a year. So with that degree, you're right. If you do not succeed in pro professional sports, you have a degree that you're going to have for the rest of your life. And that's a real valuable asset and tool to have. So I think just attending university, those are really formative years in a young person's life. That's going from 18 to 22. You're almost becoming, uh, uh, you enter as, a, as almost a, a young man and, and leave almost as, as an adult. So that's where you create a lot of friendships. You get your degree. You find out what you want to do for the rest of your life. I mean, uh, Nanad, I think it's a really, really great tool uh, when you attend a big university. Um, please tell me it would be unpolite to ask you what are you doing right now. Uh, I read all of, I read something about you have a, or your own real estate agency, your own brewery. Uh, my, my, yeah, I'm, I'm very, first of all, I'm very fortunate. Uh, I own a lot of real estate in Windsor, which comprise mostly of office buildings and apartment buildings. Uh, I also own a, a brewery, the Walkerville Brewing Company, uh, I've owned for quite a long time. And I also own an automobile business that uh, exports cars into the United States. So I really own three businesses and I, I really enjoy what I do and I really enjoy going back home to see where my mother and father were born in Trebinje. Uh-huh. Uh, met a lot of my cousins and fell in love with the Serbian people and uh, so it's it's very near and dear to my heart to go back and to see Jesu Rodjini Uselo. 
Okay. Uh, sve to je lijepo za mene. Okay. So, uh, and I followed, whenever there was a Serbian basketball player, uh, I met in the 70s a guy named uh, Ranko Jeravica. Yes. Yeah, he, he met me in Utah when I played for Michigan State and started to talk in Serbian with me. And uh, we, we became friends and Sasha Georgievich. Yeah, the current uh, head coach of the national team. Yeah, his father, Bato, and I became friends a number of years ago too. And, and I follow all of the Serbian players when, whenever they come uh, in the, at the professional level. Mm -hmm. But I, I think like you, uh, these young people in Serbia or in the, or in, in the former Yugoslavia really, really are missing something when they don't attend the university and, and have that experience. Yeah. And you follow the three players in the NBA from Serbia, Bielica, uh, Marjanovic and Jokic. How do you... Uh, Jokic is the sensation, yeah, in his rookie season. Yeah, he, he's good. I mean, I have followed all of the Serbian players mm -hmm. ever since Vladi Divac came in the league. Yeah. Uh, and I, I followed Vladi Divac and Stojakovic, uh, Dino Raja, uh, all of them I followed their careers. Yeah. And, and the Detroit Pistons drafted... Uh, Dražan Pet. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Milicic. Oh, yeah, Milicic, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I followed his career. Uh, and again, I, I still, I really, I really love what Vladi Divac is doing in, in Serbia, the humanitarian side yes. uh, for, for our people. So it's, it's great to see that and watch, you know, a Serbian tennis player, uh, Djokovic, what he does. So it's really great to watch our, our, our people help one another. Yeah. And it's great to see someone who was not born in, on the Balkans having that relationship with the Serbian people and Serbian culture and all Serbian players who who are playing in the, in the States. And it is really great to meet you and it is really great to hear your story about the college basketball and your career was really something. Well, it was, you know, and, and, and you know, just to give you another footnote, uh, our Serbian church here, mm -hmm. we have a very large basketball tournament every year. The Serb National Federation for the last 50 or 60 years has had a, a, a quite a large church tournament where I started playing as a young boy and we would uh, go to our church and we would play all the other Serbian churches in the United States and Canada once a year and uh, that's where I got to know a lot of other Serbian people and yes. knew a lot about the culture and and uh, got to got to meet Bata Djordjevic and a lot of these other Real great people. So, and I love going back to Trebinje. You told me your family's from Trebinje. Yeah, it's close. It's close to Trebinje. Also in Herzegovina, it's my descent where where I was, where my grandfather was born. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I mean, like I said, I really enjoyed going back to uh, Trebinje and seeing where my mom and dad were born in the church in Trebinje mm -hmm. and everything else. And it was, uh, it's very. You, you might as well say like I'm almost born there. Uh, you know, my two brothers and I, we speak fluent Serbian, our parents brought us up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Great. And when, when are you going to visit Trebinje again? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm going to go probably again next year uh, mm. to see my family. But, I mean, if you ever need anything, don't hesitate to call me. Uh, only, it would be great to, to write about the... Right about the church championships in Canada, because it's something that I never heard about, and I think also the, all the other press from Serbia, it's really something well, that. Well, there is uh, there is a uh, an organization called the Serb National Federation, mm -hmm. and once a year, this tournament has been going on for I think seventy years, and all of the churches uh, meet once a year somewhere in the city. And have a tournament, and it's usually about a hundred teams. Yeah. And uh, from from those tournaments, a lot of players uh, that you would have heard of, Pistol Pete Maravich played in. Yes. Uh, a lot of other great players played in that tournament, and I played in that tournament as a young boy, and it was through my church. Uh, so so if you need you need some information on that, you could just Google SNF basketball tournament. 
They'll give you a whole history. Uh, yeah. This year, I think it's going to be in uh, Detroit. Oh. Uh, and they'll have, like I said, uh, probably close to 100 teams. Yeah, we came back to... And we yeah. came back to Detroit. We started with Detroit, and we we ended with we ending with Detroit. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, Detroit. Uh, you know, Detroit's a, a basketball hotbed in the United States. There's a lot of great players born in Detroit. Uh, back in the Detroit was the fifth largest city in the United States until 1950, when it came through all of the economic problems. Yes. and so on but uh, there's a number of there's three Serbian churches in Detroit uh, so I mean it's it's produced a lot of great basketball players yes. uh, and uh, even though we're in Canada you might as well say we're a suburb of Detroit yeah uh, but no Detroit's a great marvelous uh, city with a lot of history yeah yeah it's really great to talk to you about all of this so uh, I will I will say goodbye for now, and I'm sure that we in the future we'll find some great topics we can talk about uh, about basketball and all the other things. It's really interesting to see uh, to see example of someone who had a success. Hey, I have a I have a, another uh, question for you. The last question because uh, I thought about it, and uh, that's something that we are also. Uh, repeating to all other players here in Serbia, uh, working in a company and playing in a basketball team, does it have any similarities? How would you uh, relate your business career with your basketball career in the organization, in the hard work and teamwork and uh, dedication? Uh, well, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I think as a player, I worked very hard. To become, a, to, to become a good basketball player. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think a lot of times they're not athletes are spoiled. I think a lot of times if you're a good athlete, your parents spoil you, your coaches spoil you, your teachers spoil you. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we are somehow insulated from the real world. Uh, and, and you know you read a lot of articles here, where successful athletes lose all of their money. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's happening in Europe, but yeah. a lot of uh, basketball and football players sign for millions of dollars and they, they can't manage money. Uh, they, they don't end up working once their careers are over. Uh, I see that a lot. But in my case, I worked very hard to become a, a, a player, a good player. I had a very good work ethic. Uh, I think once I got into working for myself, uh, I saw that being a teammate is similar to running a company. You have a lot of different personnel. Well, uh, you know, when you're on a basketball team and you play 60, 70 games in a year, you might as well say you're closer to your teammates than your own family. Yeah. Uh, you're spending also uh, your question is a fair question in my case I, I use hard work teamwork uh, being part of a team sometimes sacrificing your own uh, what I would call you know in basketball sometimes you need to become a team player yes. uh, there's only so many players that are going to score there's only so many players that are going to do certain things you need to fit into the puzzle and where your piece of the puzzle is you don't know so I think I learned a valuable lesson from basketball in you don't need to be the leading scorer to be successful. Every team needs these pieces collectively when they're put together. Uh, a lot of times the five best players never win. It's the five players that are playing the best. Yeah. So, right? I mean, you could take five superstars and you could have two superstars and three average players and it's a much better team. Yes. So I honestly think that it's your knowing your role, working hard, uh, managing yourself. I learned a lot of lessons from college basketball, which were discipline and hard work. So, uh, which is which I've carried on into my businesses mm -hmm. and my employees. So uh, I'm lucky there as well. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for the conversation. I don't have any more questions. We are we will keep in touch. So 
uh, enjoy the rest of the day and I'm going to sleep because the six hour it's difference. What time is it there? 10 o'clock? Uh, six, uh, six hour difference. It is uh, half past eight now. Good. Well, I want you to enjoy. <laughs> you have to. You have to. <laughs> okay. They're telling me all the beautiful women in Belgrade. <laughs> yeah, they are really beautiful. All, all, all people who come to Belgrade, that's the first thing that they pinpoint. So, the beautiful yeah. women in Belgrade. Yeah. Well, listen, it's a real pleasure, Nenad. If you're ever in this area, please contact me. If you mm -hmm. ever need anything, yeah. uh, give me a call. I love basketball and know a lot about the game and the college game and the pro game. Okay. Thank you a lot. Hear you. Thank you. Do vidjenja. Do vidjenja.